Okay, so if you've seen some of my latest videos, you know I've been doing a lot of facial motion captures, but mainly to make nightmare fuel uh, of different kinds. But um, at this point, I've had a lot of practice with facial motion capture, how to put my face on that data, and how to just work with that general workflow. So in this tutorial, I will show you how to do it using just a phone. And you can see um, on the app, and I'll talk about how to you know use this and import it into Blender and how to do stuff beyond that. Uh, but you can see this app, it has a lot of, you know, facial motion capture goodness. So um, let's just do a quick uh, demo of what you can do. So I'm gonna start recording. This video is sponsored by Skillshare, which it is. And here you can see the result of that. So yeah, I mean, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. So let me talk about them, but then uh, let me show you the whole workflow for how I do it. It will be cool. So listen, if you're the kind of person who's trying to learn a skill but haven't found like a good tutorial series that takes you from beginning to end, and really you just want all the steps in between and just want to sit down and learn something, Skillshare is right for you. There are a ton of courses about a ton of subjects like drawing, photography, videography, basically like any digital skill under the sun happens to be on Skillshare. There's actually also Blender tutorials on there, but one premium course in particular I want to recommend because I like the guy. Uh, Southern Shoddy, also known as Remington, has a course about taking a 2D illustration something you drew you made on paper and taking that into the 3d realm with blender how do you you know model it how do you shade it how do you animate it and of course with the premium membership no ads you get access to the premium courses obviously and all that and while skillshare is already super affordable i am here to make that deal even sweeter so listen up the first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description are going to get a one month free trial of skillshare with all the premium stuff so if this is something you're interested in link in the description but now facial motion capture Let's capture a face. So to make this work, you're actually gonna need two things. First of all, you're gonna need the Blender add-on to import in the phone stuff we're gonna do. So make sure to go to the uh, link in the description. Uh, it's gonna be a Gumroad link to this add-on that is available for free, or you could type in any number, but technically if you type in zero, which I don't recommend, but you could, uh, you can get this add-on for free. And once you do that, you're just gonna have a zip file that you just need to install the usual way. So in Blender, I guess I'll do this from scratch. Go to edit preferences, add-ons. If you don't have it installed like I don't, just click install and then just uh, go navigate to the zip file, uh, which we'll put it here. You enable it and then you're gonna see in the end menu, we are going to have blend AR track with a couple settings. So that's the first thing. And the second thing over on the phone, we're gonna need the actual app. So I'm in the app store. I don't know if there's an equivalent for Android. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Uh, but what you wanna do is you wanna look up blend AR track. So it's the same thing, but this is the app. You're going to see maybe an ad at the top here. Who knows? Uh, but you're going to see uh, this Blend AR track app that I think is available for free. I'm not 100, but I think it is. Uh, but this is what you want to install. So you're going to need that and that. And then once you have both of those, uh, you're going to have this app. Whoa, it's weird. I'm, I'm here. Um, Basically, this app lets you do facial motion capture. And if you switch the camera to face the other way, uh, which I guess I'll do now, um, you can actually do kind of like 3D motion tracking, uh, which I'm not going to do. That's just for like a camera track. Uh, but you want to face it here. And then when you're ready, uh, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the record button, do a little segment, and then we can uh, send it. So let's try it. Hello, my name is CG Matter, and this is my facial motion capture with a lot of movement. Okay. Uh, if you're happy with it, you can preview the recording and it will show you kind of the stationary version, but it will actually send with like head motion and all that. Make sure that looks good. Enable this uh, to have it selected. And then, so this, the top one is the one we have selected. Go to share. It's going to zip the file and then you want to send it to yourself. However, you could email it. You could text it to yourself. You could uh, put it on Lime. Why? I don't know. <laughs> just get it over to your computer um, and we'll take care of that uh, from there. Okay, back in Blender, let's actually import in our stuff. So again, uh, make sure you have the add-on installed. I already showed how to do it. So, you know, go back to that part and do it. Uh, what we're going to do is you're going to hit this button, which is going to let us select for the file. At this point, you've sent it to yourself, put it on your desktop or whatever. Just navigate over to wherever it is. So I called it add-on cap for capture. Um, it's going to be a zip file. Click accept. Uh, you don't need to unzip or anything. Just literally put it in here. Uh, disable both of these, which are only useful for the camera tracking, not for the facial motion capture. So you can disable those. Uh, make sure this is set to face mesh instead of animated empties. And then hit this button, which you're going to notice for everybody. It doesn't matter how good your computer is. It's going to freeze blender. So the video is not frozen, as you can see from the mouse. But um, this freezes blender every single time. The longer 
uh, your capture is, the more intense this is going to be. So I shit you not, <laughs> I've done a capture before where I left for 10 minutes and it wasn't done. Uh, this one shouldn't take much longer. I'm going to try to fill the dead air until uh, we get to that point. But do not be surprised if this takes a long time. I don't think it does shape keys or anything like that, but something else. Okay, so it's done. Um, it's hidden uh, underneath this cube. Uh, you can see it imports as this very tiny face model, uh, but it's actually more than that. So let me actually play what we have. So you can see uh, we have some me staying still because I didn't hit record yet. And then, you know, I'm doing the thing. Uh, first thing you're going to notice, it looks like it's in slow motion, which it kind of is because uh, the capture should be done at 60 frames per second on my phone, at least. Uh, so make sure your frame rate is 60. Uh, this will make it feel more like smooth uh, the way it actually was. Um, that looks correct. By the way, if you want to slow it down to 30 frames per second, you can literally just take the keyframes of the face and go to the first frame. Let me zoom out. Uh, scale on the x-axis by 0.5 and then change to 30 frames per second and also do it on this, but 60 frames per second is fine here. So uh, here's what it is. So uh, on the one hand, we have this face capture, which is kind of this mesh that we have um, being animated. On the second hand, we have this empty that it's parented to, and this is the one that adds the motion. Uh, we could delete this and just have the face um, motion only without the head motion, which I have used for different things like the uh, a card trick video where I put one on top, my face, this face on top of my real face, had to do it for that. Uh, but if you want both, keep both. Um, and for this, I do want both because that's like twice the amount of movement realism. Um, at this point, uh, let's talk about how to project an image of your face back onto this so it looks like a cursed thing. <laughs> uh, go to shading. So we're just going to make a material and I don't know why it's taking so long. Go to shading. For the face, create a material. And by the way, this thing should already have a UV map. Um, if not, we're just going to make a new one, which means any material, texture, whatever, as long as it's using the UV map, will actually move with the deformation. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off just making a... Wow, is this... Uh, I won't even make that joke. Uh, <laughs> but if, if, you, if you understood what I said, you're the one who made it, and you're the scoundrel. Um, we're going to just import an image of... You could just take a picture of your face. It doesn't have to be from the footage. So... Uh, find a picture of your face. This is the one I used for the um, video that I was just talking about. And you're going to see, wow, it's not correct, but it does project on and it uh, sticks. Uh, so you can see uh, the rest of this is really just uh, editing the UV map. So let's do that. So I'm just going to go to um, look dev so I can actually see what's going on. I'm just going to look for a frame where my mouth is closed. Or it doesn't have to be closed, but... Or I guess we're in edit mode. You want to be not in edit mode. So just find a frame like this one. Go to edit mode. Select everything you project from view. And now you can see anything we do to this UV map is going to stick and transfer onto there. Um, so of course, at this point, uh, all we need to do is uh, the obvious. We need to match it. So let me show you my matching technology, the techniques I've been developing. So first, uh, what I do is I get a rough fit for the face, something like this. I want the eyes centered and I want the chin to be on the chin. Um, and then we start fine tuning, which actually doesn't take that long. Turn on proportional editing, connected only, uh, which is useful for the mouth and stuff. Uh, what this lets you do is with proportional editing, uh, I'm just going to scroll up to change the size. Uh, we can shift clusters, not just a single point. So I like to uh, do the eyes first. So I do this point, then I do this point, then I just get the uh, eyelid, whatever, the, the contour correct. So that's one eye already. And seriously, this only takes like 30 seconds. So this, 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 eyes are done. Next, I go to the nose. I start with the middle of the nose. Next, I do the uh, bridge, sometimes changing the radius. The more accurate you do this, the more sensical uh, your nightmare fuel is going to look like. So now let's do this section, maybe even a bit bigger. So I'm just moving the lips. And this is why we're doing connected only, by the way. So it only moves one lip at a time instead of affecting the bottom one. Match the top lip, match the bottom lip, done. And now all we have to do is the general face contour, which you actually don't need to like stretch like all the way to the jawline. Uh, because you're going to notice it's already pretty good. And if you were to stretch it too much, you're going to get some weird... Uh, artifacts on the side. So maybe this is actually good enough. Uh, one thing I would consider is maybe moving the top since there's some hair. Just moving the top sections to get rid of hair. I can see there's some over here. We're just doing a projection that suits our needs. It doesn't necessarily need to be accurate. Yeah, there's some weird distortion there. Might be good to have two UV maps, but for this it's fine. So there you go. Uh, this is the thing. Uh, we have the base of it. Um, and it's actually very good. It looks very animated. It looks very whatever. 
but I like to add in some extra detail. So first of all, the eyes, we can actually get the eyes back in here, even though they weren't part of the original mesh. So in edit mode, I'm gonna alt click the loop, which is already a loop, so you just, whoops, you alt click, you click F for fill, and that's just gonna give us the eye automatically. Uh, because if you look at this UV map, we had everything except there, so that's just gonna fill in with this end gun. We could have like this pirate vibe, I don't know. Uh, but we can also fill this one. And the nice thing about this is if you kind of do your UV map correctly, blinking and stuff like that actually seems to work fairly well. And the eyebrow raises, which is what makes uh, somebody look human. So there you go. That's the face thing. A uh, final piece of advice is if you're like lighting this thing or doing whatever, send it through a principled BSDF. So in a rendered mode, it's actually going to react to lighting. You can move a light source. Let me bring it closer. You can move a light source, and it's actually going to light your face, and you could light it in a more realistic way. But from this point on, wow, this is some horrible lighting. Whatever. From this point on, you kind of get the gist. Everything beyond this point is just uh, stylistic. So uh, that's how I do my facial motion capture. It's really just using the app, and then the add-on to import in that information from the app, and then setting it up in a uh, good way for me. Sometimes, again, I delete this empty, so, so I just have the uh, face motion. And uh, 60 frames per second is nice. Um, either way, hopefully you learned something and uh, more nightmare fuel to come, I suppose.